Praise the Lord, everybody, once again, and we thank you for joining the Greater Atlanta Healing Temple Apostolic Church Sunday School Session with yours truly, Pastor Smith. We are conveniently located at 1332 Holcomb Avenue in the city of East Point, Georgia. We thank you for joining us today for the next few minutes. Let us start with the word of prayer. God, we thank you for mercy. We thank you for the hunger and the thirst for truth and for knowledge. We ask that you open our understanding. And I ask, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you bless all our listeners and viewers at this time. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen, and thank God. Once again, thank you for joining us. We praise God, and our lesson today is entitled, The Light of the world, the light of the world. And we are continuing our studies about Jesus Christ uh, from the book of John. Our lesson today is from St. John chapter 8, verses 12 through 20, and chapter 12, verses 44 through 46. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself. Thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true. For I know whence I came and whither I go. But you cannot tell whence I came and whither I go. You judge after the flesh. I judge no man. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. Then said they unto him, Where is thy Father? Jesus answered and said, You neither know me nor my Father. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. And Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me, believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me, seeth him that sent me. I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. And once again, thank you for joining our lesson today, The Light of the World. And for those who are watching us uh, on Facebook, uh, we have here a poster that I created, Jesus that's being represented in the world. And Jesus is the light of the world. John 8, chapter uh, 8, verses 12 and 20, and in chapter 12, verses 44 through 46. Again, our world, even today, as it was in Jesus' time, without him, outside of Jesus, the world is in darkness. Sure, Georgia Power lights the city up, or whatever city you might be in the Power Company have all the lights, a light in the streets, but when it comes to the soul of men and the lives that people are living, the world is in darkness. And not until Jesus came into the world did we see light. And in our lesson today, Jesus is explaining that with all of the darkness of the hearts of men, Jesus is the light 
of the world. Last Sunday, we talked about Jesus uh, after he had been uh, crucified and resurrected and began in his ministry and walking around teaching who he really and truly is. Last Sunday, we learned that he is the bread of life. Amen. He supplies all of our needs. Amen. If we will partake of him and let him become part of us, so join in our life. Today, he moves to a different aspect and he explained to these people, he had fed them. Uh, this is part of the group that he had fed more than 5,000. So he told them he was the bread of life, not just of the stomach, but of life. So today now he's talking about light. Light is that which illuminates or shows up darkness, shows up things so that men uh, can walk and see. If it was not for light being reflected off objects, uh, through our the retinas and our eyes, we not would not be able to see where we are going. We not, would not be able to see objects, but because of light, we have vision and we can see objects. We can see where we are going. Not until we get the light of Jesus can we really see where we are going. So Jesus is talking to this group of people and he explains to them, he makes this bold statement that I am the light of the world. Now we have Jesus talking. We have the religious rabbis, the prophets uh, who have gone up, been there before. And we have those, uh, the rabbis in the synagogues and uh, the scribes and the Pharisees. These are men who have knowledge of the scriptures. But some of them, even though they had knowledge of the scriptures, were still walking in darkness because you cannot have light until you get Jesus. And he was trying to explain, get the people to see that when he came into the world, he became the light of the world. Today, in our time, we have people with sadistic minds, people with minds to hurt people, people with minds to uh, circumvent the law, do what they want and break all kind of rules. And as a result, we have crime. We have the drug problem. We have the racial issues. We have all of these problems because somebody is still walking in darkness and not in the light of Jesus or not in the light of Jesus' word. So Jesus was talking to the Pharisees who were one of the uh, intelligent uh, group of people in Jesus' days. They were in uh, one of the uh, ruling sect. We had the uh, Pharisees and the Sadducees who were two of the key sects uh, groups of Jewish leaders. And Jesus is talking now to the Pharisees and he's telling them, look, I am the light of the world. And of course they were perplexed. Jesus will explain that anyone uh, who did not follow him because the Pharisees wanted the people to do what they said do. They wanted the people to look up to them. But Jesus was explaining, I, Jesus, I am the light of this world. And he said, uh, and if you follow me, you'll walk in light and not darkness. The same thing we do today. The same is true. If we follow Jesus, Jesus represents all that is right, all that is true, all that is holy, all that pleases our Heavenly Father. So if we don't follow Him, we are walking in darkness because we are doing those things that do not please the Father. All of this, this uh, foul language, 
all of this craziness that's going on in the world that we see today is because somebody is choosing to walk in darkness and not in the light of God's word. The word of God uh, says uh, concerning the word, the, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. It's the word of God that men as a whole don't want to hear. They want to do what they want to do, live the way they want to live, and uh, just go around whatever Jesus say. They want to be popular. They want people to look up to them. They want a lot of friends in this world. But Jesus is trying to get us to see that outside of him, we are in darkness. That's why all of the problems in our society, all of the problems with the nations, because the world is in darkness without Jesus. So, he's telling them, I am the light of the world. So then the Pharisees, uh, being the religious leaders of the day, turn to him and uh, tell him, talk to him, and basically, look, what you're saying, you are putting flowers on yourself. You are talking about what you are, but nobody else is saying that. You're the one saying that. So, and they're saying, whatever you're saying about yourself is not true. Because somebody else, in order for a testimony, and according to their law, Jesus tell, reminds them, according to their law, in order for a testimony to be true, that you have to have witnesses, somebody other than yourself. Jesus is saying, look, my word, my record, and my testimony is true. And I do bear witness of myself, but I'm not the only one. Jesus explains to them that he is one of the witnesses that bear a record of the truth. And he said, the other witness, which you don't see, evidently because you don't believe, uh, receive me. He said, the other witness is my father who sent me. We're talking about his heavenly father, not Joseph. But his heavenly father, which is the reason Jesus came to the earth in the first place, doing the will, obeying the will of his heavenly father. So he's saying, so that our record is true. My record, what I'm telling you, is true. And I'm speaking of, of myself because my father is even bearing record of me as well. And he said, you don't even know the Father. And what a word to tell the religious leaders of that day. Like today, there are a lot of religious pastors, uh, people, evangelists, uh, pastors and leaders of churches and different groups and bodies of, of supposedly be of Christ. But just because a person said, I am the head of this church, I am a pastor, or I have my doctorate in divinity, does not make them, amen, to know God. A lot of people know of God, but not everybody know God, because to know God is to know his word, and to not only know his word, but to walk in the light of his word, or his word, doing what the word commands us to do, even though we live among people who are living in darkness and committing dark deeds. So, he said, you don't even know the Father. And I know that if you don't know the Father, you don't know me. Because you cannot even tell where I'm coming from or where am I going. If those Pharisees and those religious people really knew who God was and who knew God's word and the truth and were walking in the light, they would have accepted Jesus. Because Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow. Oh, my friend, do we today in this day and time know the voice of God? Do we know Jesus? Are we walking in the light 
Are we going with the status quo? Because most people are doing it. We assume that that's right. The Bible said broad is the way to, that leadeth to destruction. Amen. But straight and narrow is the way that leadeth to eternal life. Who has that eternal life? Jesus. And he is the light of the world to point us so that we can see our way and walk with him and in him, in the light of the life. So Jesus tells them, you judge people after the flesh. In other words, you judge people by looking at them. How many people do that today? We look at people, they are, oh, they're not going to heaven. How do we know? God has their final say. When Jesus makes judgment, his judgment, all of his judgments are righteous. And let me interject here. A lot of time, we may know people that we call, quote, unquote, real good people, good hearted people. But we are looking on the outside. God looks at the heart. And many of the people we think are real nice and good and kind hearted, when God looks at them because of things that we may not see them do, God is judging according to the heart. So he said, you're judging after the flesh, but I don't judge like you do. I don't judge men like you do. And he said, yet when I do judge, because the judgments of God do come upon the land. I, there is one scripture that said, when the judgments of God are in the land, are in the earth, what do we mean? Many times uh, we read about the tornadoes, the storms, uh, we read about tragedies occurring. These are God's judgments in the earth because uh, God has to get the uh, sin taken care of. People are sinning right and left in our day and time. They're doing things just because they are big enough to do it. That does not make it right. Many people are following the crowd. Just because the crowd is doing it does not make it right. What does God's word say? What is he expecting? That's the question. So Jesus tells him to sit down. If I do judge, my judgment is true. And he says, because I'm not alone. I'm not just sitting here just uh, judging people. He says, but I and the Father that sent me. People, we must realize that God is holy. God, in God, there is no darkness at all. Nothing but light. And so when Jesus and the Father decree judgments, Whatever they say, it is right, and we cannot kick against it. Amen. So Jesus says, I am one of those that bear witness. And your uh, written in your law, it said that the testimony of two men is true. In other words, if two people agree and they give the same testimony, they are witnesses, and so their testimony is accepted. Jesus said the same with me. I am my father. He said, well, first of all, number one, I am one that bear witness of myself. So you got one witness. Jesus tell him that he is true and he is right. And he said, now the other witness who bears witness with me and for me of me is the father who sent me. Keep in mind that God, Almighty God, sent Jesus to earth with a goal in mind and a plan. And that plan was to redeem sinful man, bring man out of darkness of sin into the marvelous light of God. So you got Jesus as a witness and then his father in heaven is also bearing witness of the things that Jesus was doing and the life that he lived. So here he is refuting the Pharisees and the other people who are trying to deny 
his authority, who are trying to deny his deity, even though he came from God. And that's why Jesus told him, you don't know me. You don't know my father. Because if you did, you would accept me. Then said they, when Jesus told him, they asked Jesus a question, still trying to trap him. They look at him and said, well, then if your father sent you, who is your father? Amen. And Jesus said, you don't know me or my father. For if you had known me, if you had known who I am, you would have known who my father is. Even though Jesus walked around on earth for I believe around 33 years, he was still rejected of so many people because they did not really know who the heavenly father was. So they denied the son. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple. And no man laid hands on him for his hour to be crucified had not yet come. Then Jesus cried and said in verse 44 of the 12th chapter, Jesus still trying to get these people to see who he really is. Jesus cried and said, he that believeth on me. It was at Jesus' time, it was not time for him to ascend up back to the Father. Remember, he was sent to earth for as a propitiation and, and as atonement for our sins. And then he had to teach his disciples, he had to teach men and women the truth. So he's teaching now he's saying that whosoever believes on me, because everybody didn't believe Jesus. They didn't believe he was the light of the world. So he said, whosoever believes on me and uh, believes on me, uh, believes not on me, but on him that sent me. So Jesus was saying, if you believe me, what I'm saying, you're not really believing me but you're believing my father that sent me, my heavenly father. Amen. So in one scripture, he said, in as much as you've seen me, you've also seen the father because Jesus and the heavenly father were one and they are one because they worked together. Jesus came to do the work of his father. So he did not do anything besides what his father had uh, commissioned him or asked him to do. And so in the 46th verse, he said, I am come a light into the world. This world is in darkness. That's why men doing uh, evil things. That's why men killing each other. That's why people are stealing. That's why people are lying. That's why we have sexual immorality because people are in darkness. And if you're in dark, you can't see where you're going. So Jesus said, I am come a light into the world. And whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. So we must look to Jesus because he is the light that shineth in darkness. Without a light today, even if it was a flashlight, a spotlight, or some kind of light, we would be in darkness and would not be able to see where we're going. If there was no light at night in the dark of night, cars would not be able to see how to stay on the road. We need light. Light is that which illuminates or shows up so that we can see. Without light, we could have no vision. So without Jesus, who is the light of the world, we could not see our way to heaven. We could not see our way around sin. We would still be walking in darkness. So Jesus is the light of the world. When we accept Jesus and believe in Jesus, obey his word and let him become part of us, then we can truly say that we are children walking in the light.
Amen. So God expects you and I to not walk in darkness. What do we mean walk in darkness? To not walk according to the rules or the fashion of this world. This world tell you that when you uh, don't have any money, it's okay to steal. It's okay to rob somebody. If this world tells you it's okay if you don't like somebody, it's okay for you to kill them. That's walking in darkness. When we walk in darkness, God is love. And in God, there is love. There is peace. There is joy. All of this because he is the light of the world. And when we accept the light of the world, we accept all of these blessings and we don't have to stumble. We don't have to wonder. Are we going to trip up? Because we are walking in the light that Jesus shed. And we find out the light that Jesus shed through his word. When we read the words that Jesus spoke before he ascended back to the Father in heaven, he left instructions with a man. He left instruction with the apostles, with the disciples, how we should live. And the way you look at people living today, it is definitely not what Jesus had uh, asked us to do. We have to walk in God's word, live in God's word every day, not just on Sunday, but every day so that we can see that we don't stumble. We can see and walk around sin. We can see and don't let sin become a part of our lives because God has some people that even today are living holy. So we must walk in the light of his word, follow after Jesus, because Jesus is the light of the world. Amen. So we must continue. Amen. Walking in his light. That way we won't stumble in sin. We won't be dibbling and dabbling in sin, but we will stay with Jesus because he is light and in him there is no darkness. We thank God for allowing us to bring this word to you. We enjoy bringing it. We want you to join us again this time next Sunday, next week, when we study in the book of John, chapter 10, verses 7 through 18, when we find out that Jesus also is the good shepherd. So let us follow him and follow along in his word and find out just how great and how good a shepherd Jesus is that we may follow him. Remember, until next time, stay in the light. Let us walk in the light. God bless you. Heaven smile on you is our prayer. God, we ask your blessings, your strength, your wisdom, your direction, that we may continue to walk in the light of your word in Jesus' name. God bless you.